purpose in this situation is to get those people that are in those offices that are it, it putting those, those thing, restrictions upon us from those false numbers, get them out. That is our fight. That is how we attack this situation because it's that's the only way we can. You got to vote them out. So I mean, literally, that's what you're looking at. Under six thousand people, if the you know you do simple math, okay, you have eighty percent false positive, and then fifteen percent that they have told us that they are intentionally increasing the numbers. That leaves us with just under six thousand cases. Well, in Florida, they in addition to that, the CDC says the death toll has plummeted. <laughs> you go to the CDC website, and it it, it it went from the you know the high spike back in um, uh, was it April they had a high spike, mm -hmm. and then now it's it's plummeted. All the numbers have gone down for every age category. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? So this is something that again it, it affects all of us because you know without the mask of the beast you can't purchase anything. You know. Uh, so it, it's we have to do our, our part, um, and it, 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 we don't know what's coming down the pipe. I mean, they could just say, "All right, well, you all have to stay home." Okay. I've even re heard somebody. Was it Florida? The, this uh, guy said that you have to wear a mask in your own house and practice social distancing in your own home. <laughs> this is the mentality. This is really an attack on liberty. So. Uh, again, we have to do our part. Um, Richard's in great spirits. I spent some time with him yesterday. Uh, I'm very happy with the, you know, how things are progressing for him. Uh, the surgery obviously went well, with the exception of he's still having a little bit of difficulty with balance. So let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, my brother Derek has got uh, an aortic issue. Uh, one of his, I guess it's enlarged, um, and he has to watch his diet so that it doesn't cause any other issues. My brother and I both have a heart condition, so it's, I guess, uh, something hereditary. But uh, God willing, he does what he's supposed to. He's not smoking, he's not drinking coffee. Uh, keep that under control. Marilyn seems to be doing better, amen. Uh, I'm glad to see you're here. Uh, and of course, I'm glad to see my mom, because uh, she's been struggling with uh, her health issues. And, uh, if you haven't been paying attention, if you're not on Facebook, you're not on Signal, the church group, chat group on Signal, Seth, David McClellan, will be here probably the end of December, early January. That's her new baby. Mm -hmm. Seth. So, oh. Virginia's doing well, the baby's doing well. Yeah. If you're wondering why we chose the name Seth, Seth uh, was uh, the third son of Adam and Eve. Um, Obviously, Eve lost two boys. Uh, Cain killed Abel, and Cain was banished. So it means a lot to us. That's why we chose the name Seth, in addition to another reason why Virginia wanted to have an S named baby. Um, How does Ian feel about his baby? Ian is incredibly excited because uh, well, he's got a, a brother to play with. And the boys and girls are different. I mean, he even had to curb his, his aggressiveness with playing, you know. He, he can't, you know, sling mud at a girl. So now he's got an opportunity to play boy stuff with boys and be rough and have fun. <laughs> we'll have two mud babies in the backyard. That's, that's what's going to happen. Three. got red off there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, just so that there was just some things for you to think about. Um, probably after church, uh, uh, because of the heat, we're going to be uh, doing some soul winning role play. That way you're all on top of your game. Um, yeah, but uh, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for the blessing of our, our, our brethren here today. Uh, we continue to pray for all of them that their health is restored and they are uh, full of vigor for serving you, Lord. Lord, uh, we pray for my brother uh, that he is uh, steadfast in his, his efforts to, to keep himself healthy, uh, especially for his uh, son, Anthony. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, our members here. Again, they, they're struggling with various things and, and they need uh, restoration. Lord, bless the message today and bless all our brothers and sisters out there in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. So the title of today's sermon is apropos because we are at the last two chapters. Very exciting. 
uh, it, the title is It Is Done, I Am the Alpha and Omega. Um, you're going to actually see that in Scripture when we get to it in uh, the final chapter here. Uh, so, with a quick summary of what we've, we've covered in Revelation, chapter 1, John's undone, being swept away in the spirit into heaven. Uh, you know, to be in heaven, you have to be righteous, so that righteousness was imputed to him. Signified, signed, authorized by Christ. Everything was sealed with him. Uh, those who are called out, set apart, uh, who fight our wretchedness daily. You know, long-suffering. Okay, in prayer and and you know what, chastening is important. We need to be chastened because, well, quite frankly, we're just going to keep doing the same stuff over and over again. And we should thank God for the chastisement because that's a clear indication He loves you. So we are to be kings and saints, uh, or excuse me, we are uh, uh, to be we are saints, but uh, we will become kings uh, in the millennial reign. We will learn that this book brings blessing. So once you read it and you understand it, now that understanding gives you wisdom and power. Okay, The power to have no fear of what's coming because most people are terrified. Anytime you talk about eschatology or end time things, people are terrified. The book of Revelation, we're not touching that. <laughs> but now that you understand now you see the pattern. You have, you know, your your. We have two and a half years where it's going to be rough. The last seventy-five days is going to be really bad. But so what? You'll be having an eternity with Christ, and you know what's coming. So you have the wrath of, of Lucifer, and then we'll be taken away, and, and the wrath of God will be poured out upon the world. That is why it's a blessing because you understand it. It's no longer a terror to you. So we learned at John's admission we, we are truly brothers. Okay? This is something that most churches cannot get. They cannot comprehend the, that the, you are kin. In fact, your blood relatives who are not saved are not part of the family. So you are literally kin, brothers and sisters by the blood of Jesus. What that means is if you find a like-minded church and just go and visit them, those are your brothers and sisters too. That's powerful. And we ought to treat each other that way. I'm grateful that I've been hearing about people talking to each other outside of Sunday. Thank you. You know who you are communicating with each other outside of Sunday. <laughs> um, Brother Ben has been keeping in touch with us through the, uh, the Signal app. Uh, he's doing actually pretty good. I'm surprised. I mean, of course, he's dealing with the same kind of stress of the, the uh, social environment. Uh, but his spirits are high. So I meant to that. Amen. Working very hard up there. So we bearing the name of Christ will be joining one another in tribulation. It's going to happen. We were experiencing tribulation now. Not the tribulation, but tribulation. Oh, this yeah. is hard. But it's going to get worse. And we're, we're prepared for it. We're mentally prepared for it. <laughs> it's a constant battle for us as we battle our own sins. Sometimes even not trusting the Lord can be our own conflict. It's sin not to trust God. That's the reality. Yep. Now the wretched enemy in our lives is our sin. And of course the devil kind of sprinkles in a little temptation in there. Sometimes more than others. And all this is intended to glorify God. And this is a hard thing for, for us all to swallow. All of this is intended to glorify God. We have uh, seven lamps and seven churches, chapter 2 and 3. We have angels that are used uh, to open the chapters to help John through uh, th this very terrifying process. Now, again, you got to imagine, John's in his 90s, and he's witnessing all this stuff. It, it's got to be terrifying. Christ dictates seven letters to seven churches, seven churches uh, where we find ourselves in one way or another, a little bit of everybody in there, offering promise to overcome them. The Ephesus Church, uh, known as the Apostolic Church, uh, the wicked Nicolaitans participating in corrupt delegation of authority. 
Smyrna, the persecuted church, 50 years uh, after John's death, Polycarp, uh, uh, the pastor of Smyrna, was 86 and he was burned alive for refusing to worship Caesar. And again, promise to the overcomer. You're going to worship Caesar? Or are you going to allow them to burn you alive? Burn me up. Pergamos, um, which was a mixture of objectionable marriage, the mar married church, uh, fence riding, worldly, a church interested in becoming cool and edgy to gain things of the world, signified by the Balaam reference in that chapter. Some of them have Christ in there, there somewhere in the haze of lights and smoke shows and contemporary music over preaching, skinny jeans, messy hair, all that feminine stuff that the, the pastors are doing these days. Again, there's promise to the overcomer. There are saved people in each of these churches. Why they're there, I don't have an entirely clear answer. Maybe because there is some comfort in, in having friends, you know. Thyatira, the big one, Jezebel, the universal church, brought it, uh, us great people whom God used to His glory to give the wisdom of His words. Now granted, there's use there. However, the church has already existed prior to the, the advent. But again, that's the reference there, that Thyatira resembles the universal church. Thyatira actually existed, okay, it's not, um, we, we can't conform each one of these to a specific church because there's a little bit of every, of them, every one of them in, in every church in some way or, or, or another. So unfortunately, the, the one that it represents uh, today, you see largely affected, suffered under Jezebel, the Queen of Heaven, not the Mother of Christ in name only, but she's the Bride or the Deceiver, known by many names. Again, still promise the overcomer. It's a, there's two million people in there, and there are believers in there. <clears throat> we know this because we've, we've gotten plenty of people saved, and we're not going to do it. We give them the gospel, they get it, and then we never see them again. Sardis, livest and are dead. You remember? Uh, for in me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Hold fast to the doctrines of Christ alone, always turning from our own wicked ways, always being reformed by the Holy Spirit into the likeness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. That's uh, chapter, verse 4 of the, chapter 3. Again, not everyone within these churches are subdued by things that are wicked and false doctrines. Some, there are believers there. Philadelphia, the, the city of brotherly love, the first fruit of the Holy Spirit, not the church on the hill, not the one the best suit wears, the maxi skirts, but the individual who is among us, all that truly understand is given a clear immutable wisdom of what a brother does. Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend, John 15, 13. The parable of the Good Samaritan, one who can lavish holiness upon another, regardless of the state of their being, give them a higher regard than themselves. Philadelphian church exists in every church. There are great men and women who serve God in every church. And they will be pillars. Laodicea, not so hot, not so cold, also known as church light. Uh, looks like a Christian, but lacks all the richness of his righteousness, lacks the saltiness. Those are the people that are afraid to confront things that are wicked in this world. They say they're Christian, but they won't be bold in their pursuit to, to preserve life. There are plenty of church people that have had abortions. That's why when I discussed this with you previously, the Protestant religions have the highest number of abortions. What about pastors who don't stand up against the, the sodomite agenda? They're later to see it. They're weak. They're afraid. They're worried. They're going to offend somebody. 
And God said he'd spew them out. The churches that precede Sardis and Philadelphia and the churches that have been invented here in the U.S., they have uh, Jesus, kind of. Um, so again, there are some people that believe it's chronological. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that there's chronology in those letters. But when you see it as a whole, there's a lot of characteristics of those new churches being born. So you, you, as you've seen the church timeline that I've showed you, everything happened after the 1800s because that's when Constantine Simonides, uh, his Bible was written. You can't have a new religion without a new Bible. And of course it's a false Bible. B Bishop Benedict had determined that the Byzantine text was wicked. In his mind he had to correct it. He had to correct God's word. So consequently we have numerous other religions popping up. I think the last one would be Armstrongism in the 1920s, if I remember correctly. Uh, that was a church that we grew up in. Uh, but again, there's many there. There's Jehovah's Witness, Mormons. And they don't even know that Jesus Christ is a living Son of God. Fully man and fully God. And he's standing at the door knocking. They, they have a glimmer of what, it, what who, who Christ is. And in some cases they don't because they have completely made up a new one. There is still promise to them. All of these people can get saved. The gospel is the same for everyone. White stone, hidden manna, new name, chapter 4, the strange things in heaven. Holiness of God and represented the holy, holy, holy. Seraphim, elders introduced, chapter 5, victory and the victor. Singing in heaven, prelude or, or summary. Again, these are, see, some of these chapters are overlapping one another. Uh, the, again, as I, I expressed to you that when we had the four horsemen, that was like the summary of what's about to occur. Chapter 6, seven seals, first of the four or five horses, false peace, famine, death, persecution. Billions are cleansed from the earth. The church uh, remains uh, in the, the uh, first 1260 days. Wrath of God upon the world leaders and reprobates the second half, the 1215 days. Chapter 7 goes over the 144,000 tribes of Judah, each bearing uh, their own sinful past, forgiven and chosen holy as an army. Side by side with those who came out of the tribulation, you. Those who will be alive and remain and refuse to take the mark. That's coming, folks. It's coming fast. Mm -hmm. I just read to my wife an article about, was it Minnesota? That had made a, a, a RFID mandate? Yeah. We have country, whole countries that are doing it now. Israel was one of the last ones that said that everybody has to have the chip. Over my dead body. Well, that's probably what it'll come to. Hallelujah. So, again, you as Christ's chosen people will be a part of that army coming to, to help, coming to bring the gospel. Chapter 8 and 9, seven seals are open, seven trumpets, raging fire, seas polluted, fresh water contaminated, celestial destruction, first woes of demons, rebels trying to kill themselves, but made to live. That in itself is horrifying. It, it, it's, in, it's in complete insanity. That's what a reprobate is. They're completely insane. They're slaying the reprobate, reprobate rebels uh, by angels and by the billions. Chapter 10, the little book, the holy book, sweet as honey, but also bitter. It convicts us. The little book is talking about is this one. You read it, and I guarantee you, you'll find things in there about yourself that you didn't want to know. That's why it said it's sweet as honey because there's so much richness of the love of God, but there's also the chastisement because you know that you are wicked. <laughs> Chapter 11, the final tepon, second woe, two prophets Moses and Elijah depicted by their abilities, given fire to shut up heaven, the power of the stars, and smite the earth with plagues. The Antichrist kills them. The world throws a party over the, the two and the third day they were resurrected, terrifying the world with a great voice. They returned to heaven. The final woe under the rule of Christ, final judgment. Like the Synoptic Gospel, we're seeing chapter over chapter, giving you details of the end time overlaying chapter. 
Just like the Synoptic Gospel. When you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're having the same account of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John's presence with Christ. The life, death, burial, and resurrection. So it's the same thing in the book of Revelation. You're having an overlay of these chapters depicting more and more. You're getting more and more of an image in your mind. Chapter 12, the devil after the church, defeated and locked up, the final woe repeated, rule and judgment of our Lord. The church spared the latter three and a half, uh, three, 1215 days and given an ark of sorts as Christ uh, gives allusion to in Matthew. Hold fast is the message. Chapter 13, world leaders and nations under the rule of the Antichrist. The Antichrist wages war against the saints. We're given a description of who the Antichrist is uh, and the son of perdition obviously being revealed in his peace tree and then the deadly wound. Uh, of course, he's dead for a short time and somebody else takes his place to uh, rule but a very short time. Mark of the beat, there's a betrothal to the devil. Any device that should be avoided, but the true mark uh, it, it is not entirely a mechanical thing. It is a uh, also a spiritual thing. So you're, 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 you, when they take the mark, they're actually taking a betrothal to the devil. It's the same thing with Christians. We have the mark of Christ upon us. That is because we have betrothed him. When we get baptized, we're committing our lives to Christ. So, so chapter 14, 14 uh, uh, 144,000 marked by the Father, redeemed, summary of revelation, wrath, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, is uh, the message there. Those who bear the mark, overcomers, and those who have died in Christ in the first resurrection all caught up together. The grapes of wrath, almost 1,300 miles of blood. Chapter 15 and 16, holy righteousness uh, is his wrath, the wrath of Christ our God. Vials poured out, sores upon him, seeds become coagulated blood, rivers of blood lead to the coagulated sea. The sun burns up men, completely blinded in, in, in darkness. Euphrates dries up, frogs uh, from the dragon. Uh, people will think that those are aliens because that's what they're going to look like. I mean, the image of the weird triangular shaped head with the big eyes. Uh, the final battle of Armageddon, as we know who Magog is. Again, in modern day Turkey, the uh, Khazarians, the Jews fighting against saints. The final vial poured out into the air, that the, where the devil reigns, the prince of the air feels the final vial, the earthquake likened to Calvary, except the whole world feels it. Babylon, the city, the nation of religion recovered, world leaders fled in fear, 130 pound hailstones planting unsaved reprobates. Chapter 17 and 18, Mystery Babylon, shouldn't be so mysterious to you anymore. Uh, Jezebel sends Jesuits, some of the most dangerous people in the world, to the hindermost nation to give land known as Rome to her, now known as Washington, D.C. Babylon the whore, the papacy rides the beast, the hinder nation who is ruled by the city of war, papacy nation and city, uh, Easter in the harbor of New York, soon to be the greatest merchant of all the world, Pope Francis and the Jesuits and world leaders. Uh, signed a UN compact essentially giving power to the Pope. That was September 15th of 2015. Union of Papacy and Lutheran uh, under Eucharist. Eucharist is an abomination against Christ. One thing Martin Luther trembled with the point of inability to perform understanding truly what the body and blood are. Eucharist is a ritual of uh, abomination. Chapter 19 and 20, the saints of today, tribulation believers, Old Testament saints and angels by Jesus Christ, the first horse of the apocalypse, the white horse, the harvest of blood of rebels, Satan bound for a thousand years, Christ rules with the saints, white throne judgment, all the dead to be judged according to their works, hell delivers up the dead, sinners that had no chance. He's cast in the lake of fire. Thank God every day that you're saved. Okay, chapter, we're doing chapter 21 and 22. So in your Bibles, chapter 21, this will go very quickly, folks, because I don't have very many notes for the two chapters. 
And I saw the new heaven and the earth, and the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In the book of Peter, it talks about God burning up everything. How do you get rid of a horrific uh, plague? You burn it with fire. You try to wash it away with water once, it didn't work. Now we got to burn it up. Uh, again, this is not a reference to hell, folks, when it's talking about the sea there. It's, uh, it's literally no more sea, uh, which changes everything, a new ecosystem. Verse 2, And I, John, saw the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband, as a bride. The word also means from, which could imply the church builds the city. Okay? Verse 3 and 4, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more deaths, and no more sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The, the reference there is to be completely obliterated any memory of the, the death and pain and sorrow of these things panged our souls through our sins, gone forever. You will have no recollection and no memory of them. Chapter 21. Okay, verse 5 through 7. And he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for though these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. The, the title of today's sermon. I am the Alpha and Omega. One of the great I am's in the Bible right here. Christ declaring himself as God, beginning and the end. It was his very voice that created the heavens and the earth, and it's his very voice that came and cut asunder flesh and bone, as we saw in Revelation. And beginning and end, and I have given unto them him that is, is a thirst and of the fountain of the water of life freely. You were given this freely. And you're taking it willfully. Some people are under the impression that, that man is not given free will. And that God imputes His faith upon you. But clearly it says here, you're taking of it freely. And you that overcome it shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He is faithful. He is our holy God. He made all things. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fountain of living waters, comes from Christ. In these days we will always thirst and desire him. The promise that those who overcome, once again, hold fast to the great tribulation. Those who have come out of wicked churches, most of us have. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. Verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is a verse that we use in soul winning over and over again. The first one is being fearful. What could it be referring to? I have the knowledge of how to get to heaven, but I don't want to tell you. Because I'm afraid of what you might think of me. Christians. To fear anything but God is a sin. That's what it's telling you. The unbelieving. Well, Christ said that they, they, they're already condemned if they do not believe. The abominable. Well, there's plenty of abominable creatures. God mentions them many, many times. Murderers. You know, the reprobate does that without any conscience. There have been men that, in, in, that, that are godly men that have taken lives, but not intentionally. It wasn't a thing of their heart. Does that make them a murderer? No. So you have to understand the distinguishment. That they have no conscience in the things that they do. Poor mongers, the sorcerers, idolaters, and every one of us is a liar. Be fearful for those who fall away, too scared to proclaim the name, unbelieving, atheists, bottom little, 
Those are God of Wars, treacherously wicked. You know, many uh, will, will try and uh, stretch the word sorceress uh, from the Greek word pharmakia. But what I want to ask you, if, if understanding that the King James Bible is perfect in every way, what do sorcerers do? Sorcerers cast spells. Sorcerers also make potions. These potions are not for illness and taken as a narcotic to improve your health. So basically we're talking about people that are drug users. Pure evil. Okay? You know, the reality is, is that if you're using narcotics on a regular basis, you're opening up a door. If you are a person that gets drunk on a regular basis, you're opening a door. And you don't want those things coming in. So basically that whole uh, verse there in, in chapter 8 was about reprobates in general. Um, verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which are the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Remember we used a cross-reference there to uh, a previous chapter. Uh, regarding the devil. I'm going to read from uh, right through to, to, to uh, verse 20 here. And he carried me away in the spirit in a great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her life was like unto the stone most precious, even like the jasper stone, clear as crystal, and well great and high, and twelve gates, and gates twelve angels, the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Pretty simple to understand. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and the wall of the city was in twelve foundations, and in the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Why does God's holy city have walls? Righteous on the inside, unrighteous on the outside. Amen. And he who talked with me and begotten need to read to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city lie four square and the length of it is large as the breadth. And he that measures the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs. That's a big city. And the length and the breadth and the height are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And building the wall was uh, of jasper and the city was pure gold like in the clear glass and the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all the manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third and chalcedony and the fourth was emerald and the fifth sardonyx and the sixth sardius and the seventh chrysolite and the eighth beryl and the ninth topaz and the tenth chrysoprasus and the eleventh jacinth and the twelfth Amethyst. Now there are some that will take the time and go over each one of those stones and give you life nice uh, quaint stories, um, but I don't have one and I won't partake of that and I won't give you those stories because I can't give you an honest answer why those stones were chosen. I mean, I'm not going to stand up here and lie to you, but it's beautiful. That's what we can take from that. It's rich. That's what we can take from that. It is fit for a king and his pillars. That's what we can take from that. The glory of God's holy kingdom fit for a king and his saints. 21 through 27. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gates were one pearl. And the, the street of the city were pure gold. And it was, it was transparent like glass. What a very unusual concept because in, in our world we understand things very simply. Gold you can't see through. However, in heaven that's the case. I don't have an answer, but it's God. So God is capable of doing anything. And I saw no temple therein, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Do you understand that? It's not a temple with walls, it's God. And the city had no need for the sun, neither the moon, the shine in it, the glory of God lightened it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. That's why in the book of Genesis, when God said, let there be light, he hadn't even created the sun and stars yet. Where did the light emanate from? Himself. And this is the proof of it here. 
And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. Again, folks, every nation, which means that it will be people of fair complexion, people of very dark complexion, different features. Okay? The, the idea that there's no black and white in heaven, that's a farce. Every nation will be represented. God likes the variety, otherwise he wouldn't have created it himself. It seems foolish to assume that. And the gates of it all shall be sh shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it, it anything that is de defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, and maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So once again, everything that is unrighteous is on the outside. Everything that's righteous on the inside. Burley Gates, uh, but no Peter present. Uh, that's a myth. <laughs> uh, the Book of Life has always been there. Uh, God knows who is in it. Uh, and the position who to enter into the, the, the gates of heaven is, is uh, Christ's decision. Uh, he is exclusively His because through His blood we have that entrance. Uh, the gate never needs to be closed again. The glory of the redemptive work of Christ upon the cross, the temple, no need for a temple. Uh, we've heard theologians discuss the passage, but they miss the holiness. Exodus 3.5, you might want to put in your notes. Exodus, uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 33. Joshua 5.15. Wherever God is, it is holy. So wherever His feet are, that is a holy place. Do we understand that that's why there's no need for a temple? Moses, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now every saints are holy. Holy as He is holy. No need for the sun. Christ being the light sufficient. Holiest kingdom. Okay, chapter 22. And He showed me a pure river of water, clear as a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield her fruit every month, and it leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. No need for sea, no need for, for any of that, when you have living waters. Again, this is also a reference going back to Christ and the woman at the well. Had she had known who she had asked uh, if he wanted water, she would have asked him for living waters. The living waters is a reference to salvation. And Christ wanted us to know that it really is as easy as drinking water to get saved. It's the rest of the world that has applied all this work and, and, and dogma to it. Again, I've said it a million times. I can't tell you how many times I've said it. I might be exaggerating, but... Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe in thee and thine house shall be saved. Not believe and go to church. Not believe and, and read your Bible. Not believe and be baptized. Not believe and do anything else. It is completely putting all your trust in Christ's finished work. And if you add to it, you're telling Him, Hey, sorry, Jesus. What you did on the cross and going to hell and bringing the blood on the mercy, that's not enough. I have to apply myself to that. Belong. Moving on. And there shall be no more curse. What is the curse? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. The curse is he who hung on the cross. Okay? No more. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and the servants shall serve him. No more sin, no more curse. If you're truly serving God, there's no disobedience, so there's only love. Verse 4, And there shall be his see his face, and the name shall be in their foreheads. Again, this is the antithesis of the mark. Okay? You are bearing Christ's name in your forehead. The betrothal to our Lord. That's what the, the reference is to... Uh, the in the forehead is betrothal. Verse five, and there shall be no right there, there, uh, th no night there. Excuse me, and there no need for a candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign 
forever and ever. Who's reigning? Who is they, if not the saints? This is why I find it humorous when somebody, you know, expresses uh, Matthew chapter 7 in, in two words. I am. you got to read the rest of the chapter, folks. If you read Matthew 7 and give me two words out of it, you're sadly mistaken. You as Christians are groomed to judge. You as Christians are groomed to rule. Why? That's how God made it. That's His Word. So Matthew 7, judge not. Well, read the rest of the chapter, you fool. I'm so sick of that. that, that you know, beyond that, with people giving me that. <laughs> how foolish do you sound when you say that? And Paul writing that we will judge angels. And where was I? Uh, and he said unto Five. these things, the faithful and true, and the Lord God of holy prophets, and sent his angels to show unto the servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And I, and when I heard and seen, I fell down and worshipped before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and for thy brethren and prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Things are revealed to us, because we have the Holy Spirit in us. He gives us understanding. We are going to be witnessing righteousness in its fullest capacity. Again, the white throne judgment is imminent for the world. You've already been judged. Your judgment happened at the cross. Promise of inheritance reserved to the children of old and the saints of now. This is not the same as the inclusiveness of false doctrines who created their own Jesus and their own kingdom, those who exclusively belong to their faith. You do not have to be a part of Redeemed Baptist Church to be saved. I can't stress that enough. There are people in this world, in many, many churches, that are saved just because they understand what it means to believe in putting all your trust in Christ. Why they're still there, I, I can't give you an answer. In some cases, like the Bible says, they're drunken by their colorful words and colorful images, perhaps. But the reality is, is that it is not exclusive. The gospel is not exclusive. Anybody could be saved. That's why it says whosoever, which disrupts the mind of a Calvinist like no end. will be saved. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Philippians 2.2 2. This is why we are King James only. Okay, You cannot be of one accord if you're reading a different Bible. Granted, there is no other Bible. I've made it very clear there is no such thing as another Bible outside the King James Bible. It doesn't exist. There are books out there that proclaim to be, but when you start messing with doctrines, like the deity of Christ, seriously, you're going to actually put your faith in a book that tells you that Jesus Christ was the son of Joseph? I have no faith in that. None. If he's not God, then we have nothing. We are of one accord because we put all of our faith and trust in this one book. And that's why you'll find like-minded churches being King James only. It is that simple. Now, granted, there are some King James onlys that are really far in the extreme that you can't you can't use a synonym for a word because that's not in the King James Bible. That's absurd. That is that is beyond silly to to consume that you cannot use a synonym. The word that means the same thing because it's not what's written in the Bible. So when you're out there, for some reason, maybe you've forgotten how the Scripture is versed, and you use a different word that means the same thing, mm -mm. there's nothing wrong with that. This is, these are not 
the words on the page are very important, but it, it's not magical in the sense that without you using the exact word, it's false. So if you use the word, it doesn't even matter what it is. The bottom line is if it's a synonym, it's a synonym. It's the same thing. So again, there's a difference between a King James only and a, and a Rachmanite. We, we should uh, be very wary of that. All right, finishing this up. Now, ten. Uh, we were in verse... Ten. You're at ten. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is, is at hand. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. There's no... The, the, the chances are done. You, you've had it. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward, excuse me, is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. So you as Christians, the work that you're doing now does count. You know, again, there, there are a lot of people out there that misconstrue James 2 when it says faith without works is dead. It's talking about you acting like a Christian and doing work. People ought to look at you and say, well, this person's different. They're not like everybody else. If they see you and look at you and go, well, you look like us. You look like you're part of the world. You dress the same as us. You act the same as us. Okay? Follow? Mm -hmm. So, you, you will be rewarded based on that. So if you are called out, as God says you are, ecclesia, the church, means called out once. If you are generally called out and diligently working, the first work, salvation, bringing the gospel, if you're diligently doing that, you'll be rewarded. And you'll be rewarded accordingly. If you are a member of this church and for some reason you're physically enabled, don't assume that you are without reward. You are a part of this church and you are an integral part of this church. Everyone shares in the bounty. We understand that. I've already preached a sermon on that. Bounty belongs to all of us. So if I'm the only person out there knocking doors, you all are blessed by it. Both physically and spiritually and of course in future time. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that it may have right of the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs. They're still around. Oh, what a shame. And the sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoso loveth maketh a lie. And I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto thee. These things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David, and bring in the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, your choice, let him take the water freely, the water of life freely. For I testify to every man that heareth the words of prophecy of this book. If any man shall add to these things, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. That includes the Book of Mormon, the great, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Pearl of Great Price, any of these additional books is what he's referring to. If any man shall take away the words from this book of prophecy, God shall take away this part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the book. Omitting Acts 8.37 in the Alexandrian text, a.k.a. the Codex Sinaiticus, as I call it, the Constantine Bible. They removed that. So where does that put uh, Bishop Benedict and his nephew Constantine Simonides? Out of the book of life, in hell, correct. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, Galatians 1.8. So men like Joseph Smith, who claimed that they were visited by an angel, bring him a new book. <laughs> which is still being written and rewritten. For if we come and preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might be well bear with him. 2 Corinthians 11.4 
Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and once again, He is fully man, fully God. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is not an angel named Michael, as the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. He's not a product of fornication, as the Mormons believe. And their only intent is to gain power and money on the earth. The curse it speaks of in Galatians and Revelation is a lake of fire. There's a big price to pay for not studying Scripture. In the, in the book of Timothy, it says, Study and show thyself approved. Not having the knowledge is your own fault. I could preach to you from cover to cover this Bible. God willing, I do. He which testify these things say, Surely I come quickly. Amen. And I say that personally, folks. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. So we have grace upon grace for the whole world. Every living creature receives grace upon grace. Give them time to come to Christ. That is the grace they receive. It, it's called a common grace. They're allowed to live as long as 120 years according to Scripture. So they have time to come to the Lord. The grace is given to you as a believer is eternal life. Saving grace, the inheritance of saints, even so come praise Jesus, the second coming, our promise for overcoming, glorification with Him for all eternity to be able to serve our King of kings, Lord of lords. Praise Jesus our Christ. Now, next week I have a, a very important message for you and I'm looking forward to sharing it because each and every one of us need to hear the next message. Um, we'll be reading a lot from Psalms. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful message. Thank you. And I, I pray that the, the book of Revelation is understood and it becomes simplified and know you don't need to know everything. It's okay not to know everything. It's okay not to know why every stone was used on, on the, the kingdom. So, without uh, any further, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the wisdom of your word. Lord, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. We pray that they are diligent in, in, in not only learning about you, but serving you in any manner and capacity that they can. And, and bless those who are able to, to continue in soul winning today. In Christ's holy name, Amen. Amen. Okay, questions and answers. Uh-huh.